Um, so I, I spend a lot of my time sort of doing those events that might need a critical mass. So if you're a church and you maybe can do a residential, uh, we do residentials for every age group from seven up to about 22s. And if you've only got sort of half a dozen kids, you might think I'd never be able to take them away. So we take away uh, about seven or eight groups altogether. Uh, and so I spend a lot of time doing that, which I love. And then sort of other things that need a critical mass, like uh, worship events, you know. If you crack your guitar out in front of just three kids and start singing Shine, Jesus, Shine, uh, that doesn't go down well. So we run a monthly sort of area worship event. Uh, and then we do a few other things like training things where we just gather people together because uh, we are much better together and we can learn from each other. Um, so a lot of the things I'm going to share are basically what I do. Now, I'm well aware that the things that we do might not work in your environment. But my hope is a bit like, uh, you know, chucking out a box of celebrations... Uh, even if all the Snickers and Marathons and Bounties are left in the bottom, somebody will grab the Maltesers and the Mars and we'll all get something. Okay, that's the plan. Um, so I, somebody gave me the title, is, uh, uh, what's, almost what's the point in having fun in youth group? That was what they were insinuating. Because you get some church youth workers who, it's, you're not going to have fun. You know, we're here to make sure we all stay Christians, that sort of thing. And I think there's a wonderful middle ground, and that's what I want to talk about. Um, so I use the title, using games, icebreakers, and team builders, uh, uh, they're, they're more than just fun. So there, there's a reason we use them for something. So uh, I want to show you a clip first. You may have seen this, you may not have. Uh, this is a VW campaign, uh, if you believe it. So if you go on that website, if you want a bit of fun, there's four videos that make me laugh. And the idea is making the normal everyday things more fun. So there's a recycle bin uh, where you put things in and it's in a, it turns into a fruit machine. So as you put your recycling in, there's the bottomless bin, which is a lot of fun, where as you drop your rubbish in the bin, they put a microphone in there so it goes... <laughs> and just keeps on going and it makes a splash. And then the best one is, instead of going down the stairs into the tube, they built a slide. And so people that don't want to go down, you could just go down the slide. It's a really good website. But the, I thought the statistic was crazy. So 66% of people chose to use the stairs over an escalator. Whereas if there wasn't a piano there, I presume they're saying, actually most of us would choose the lazy option or the ordinary option. And so I just want to talk about the idea that if we put a little bit of slightly different fun, it sort of promotes a conversation, it promotes a different way of doing things. So that's why I do games. Is I do games because I love games. Uh, I do games because the reason I became a Christian was because a youth worker came up to me and said, Mike, uh, can you play football with some teenagers? Uh, and I said, well, I don't like teenagers, I don't like anyone, I don't even like myself, but I like football. And so I started playing football with a bunch of teenagers, and then out of that, sort of 30 years later, um, doing this. And so there's the idea of, 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 of that sort of place 
where we can meet people and have conversation. So I just thought of reasons why I do games is that I think they build community. I think the idea of doing a game together is a, is a community thing. Uh, I think you build relationships, so the one-to-one -one relationships, so the person you're next to or the person you're on a team with. Uh, I think laughter is underrated. I think actually if we can laugh with our youth groups, I think that's really important. Uh, it helps us all relax. Uh, and then the flip side is it wakes us up. You get into youth group when everyone's like, you know, it's Sunday morning or Sunday evening, they're like, oh, something's on their mind. It wakes us up. Um, I think it's healthy competition. I'm not one of these people that thinks, you know, second place is, is okay for Christians. We'll, we'll take the second place. So it encourages healthy competition, you know. Um, and then I think it helps us, our minds, to think differently. So I just want to share a few things that we do. And then one thing I'm really going to do is I'm going to promo something we're doing as 267 that you'll be able to buy off us, which is a new resource uh, that's hopefully going to be ready in the next sort of five weeks. And the idea is that this is a, a not a big game resource, so it's not a sports or game resource. It's if you're sitting around with a bunch of people, um, you're doing something that's going to promote conversation. Because one of the biggest things I had youth workers telling me last year was that we have our youth club and then we want to do the God slot, and it's like, you know, it's the worst thing ever they find. Uh, and so they say, what's the sort of hook to, to start a conversation? So I started thinking, well, there's a lot of people asking me this. So I started sitting down thinking, right, I've got something, and I've called it a God slot box. And basically, it's going to be a box of stuff, uh, six or seven different items, and there'll be three lessons, effectively teaching points, with each item. So you'll get about 20, 21 talks in a little box and then the idea is being after you've used them all you can give them back to us and we'll by then hopefully have written some new ones and they're just simple things so I'm going to introduce you to them and then if you can take my uh, card uh, I've got a business card you can take one of them drop me an email and then I will tell you when they're ready and you can buy one off us and they're not going to be extortionate they're just going to be whatever it costs us to make them you know, but it gets, it helps us do what we're called to do, which is resource you. So the first thing is uh, it'll have dice in it. So dice, uh, you can get a bag of dice, uh, and there's a all number of games. You're just sitting there. The idea being that you want to be. It's not like if you've got 50 in your youth group. I mean, you could do it and break down. But if you think what happens when you're uh, sitting around a campfire or you're sitting having a meal together, it's that sort of small gathering thing. So you get a load of dice out and you say, right, we're going to play. Somebody take three dice, first, people, first person to throw three the same number. Or, you know, you play Yahtzee or something like that. Or, for the slightly more competitive people, how high can you stack dice? You know, and things like that. Or how high can you stack dice with your weak hand? or blindfolded. So there's loads of games that we'll put in there. And then we'll take a, a verse, like the one I'm sort of starting to think about is Psalm 139. So we all know Psalm 139, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, so how does it feel to you to have that much time and energy put into you being created, what Psalm 139 talks about? Is that chance or is that planned? And so it's just a really simple hook, sometimes tenuous, sometimes less so. But it basically, you play a game and you say, actually, let's just read a verse. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Before you were even thought of, God put you together. And they're like, what do you think about that? And then it's just that. It's not to have a 20-minute Bible study with them. It's just to start that conversation. The next thing we have, which you've probably all got in your box, Play-Doh. Online, so that's an eight-pack of Play-Doh. That's two quid. That's all that is. It's really easy to get. Let me shut that down so it doesn't do anything funny. Um, so we thought uh, the one that's come to mind is the Ephesians 2.10, which is we were created uh, to do, we are work of art, created to do good works in Christ Jesus. So you get them just to make something, play something. And I say, what are you really good at? How does it feel to be created with the ability to do something that nobody else can do? So I stand here before you, I have no qualifications. I have my 10 metre swimming badge and my cycling proficiency test. That's it. But God told me what, thanks. Uh, uh, but God told me I've got something that only I can do. And so that's really key. Um, love hearts. Literally, you can buy uh, like a box of 600 of these packs of love hearts for hardly anything. It's brilliant. But, you know, they've got some really cheesy things. You can all open them. You can have a bit of a laugh of all the funny things it says. But then you can sit there and say, well, actually, let's talk about, you know, 
the 1 Corinthians passage, what's more powerful, love or hate? Why is love so powerful? If you were to, if someone was to say something that would make you feel loved, what would they write on a love heart? You know, things like that. Simple things. Um, what do we have? These things I love. I've got lots of these. This is why I need two hands. Hang on. I do. I need that up high, but I'll do it this way. So uh, I use laminates a lot. So ba- basically, because I've got a slightly unhealthy fetish of laminating, I find it the most relaxing thing in the world. Uh, so what we do is we just get a load of pictures and then we throw them all on the floor, lay them all out. So I've got different packs, they have different themes, and then basically they, they've all got different pictures that, that say different things. So some are, you know, they prompt a different conversation uh, right through to, you know, things like that. Uh, or that one. You know, and then we've got loads of laminates, and I've got another set which are all locations. I've got another set which are all... Um, sort of places in creation, and we sit there and we say, okay, where, where are you with God? Pick a laminate that shows where you are with God. Or maybe that Romans 1.20 I had down here is that creation speaks of God. So actually, put all the pictures there. What does that picture tell you about God? And then literally, we got all of them, and we got them in different sizes. So we made a little pack like this. And I've started using these. We take three youth workers or children's workers away on retreat on a train. We book first class tickets, because if you book them with us, it's cheap. We go to York. You get those two seats opposite each other, four, four of you sitting, and you sit there and you do your retreat and you lay all these out on your table and you start having prophetic words for each other or you ask conversations. And we have a whole day together, so we bought some small ones now. So if you haven't got the space for that, we've got sets of these. And so you can lay them all out and you can ask all sorts of things. Um, pipe cleaners, pipe cleaners, really good, get them to make, they're really good. If you've got people that are slightly fidgety, pipe cleaners, really good for bending, tweaking, just get them to make something. But we were talking about actually uh, try and make a person, that's a good obvious thing to make, uh, was Jesus more than a man? Look at some of the C.S. Lewis stuff. If he was who he says he was, what does that mean to me? Uh, Scrabble letters, it's a big bag of Scrabble letters, thank you. Big bag of Scrabble letters, uh, uh, just talking about when God speaks to us. So there's that psalm that said, God's word is a lamp to my feet. What might God be saying to you? And then the one I haven't got now is Mr. Potato Head. The little Mr. Potato Head things. You know, one of them talking about parts of the body that we all have a part to play. The Bible says that actually, if, if we're all the same, we're, we're missing, we're incomplete. And so there's this box that you'll have and you'll sit around with your youth group or your kids and you'll just play one of these games and then just for five minutes you'll have this conversation. But I guarantee with you, guarantee that either afterwards when you're having hot chocolate or next week you'll be able to say to them, oh man, when you made that thing, that was brilliant. That was just, and it just becomes that start point, that first domino. So that'll be coming out hopefully in the next month. Now a couple other things we do is uh, I have a box of random objects. So here is literally a random box of objects. So everything from a spirit level to a uh, scouring pad to some marmite, a torch, a padlock, a ping pong ball, uh, some hubba bubba from 1980 something, you know, uh, a toolkit, a peg, a spoon, a TARDIS, uh, a, a, a retro phone, Everything, and I have that, it sits in my office. I've got about three different ones, and you throw them all out on the floor, and you say to them, I want you to take five objects and tell me about your week using five objects. And then what you've done is you've found out about their week. And not your work here is done, but how great is that that you've got a young person to tell you about how their week's gone? And it's just um, simple rubbish things. That just are there things that are either broken or in my office, and I just put them in a box. And we've got small ones, a small box of little things, if you're sitting at a table. Or we've got a bigger box with giant things, you know, where you can put cushions, anything like that. And it just, again, is that starting a conversation. And the other thing, uh, just before I finish, so I'm right on time, is sometimes... You've got your sort of theme, and you th- and I don't know if you've ever done this, and I do this, I really wish I had a game that fitted the theme. Rather than actually, I've got a game, 
can we do a theme around the game? And so it's a really tricky one. But so I started doing this, doing a game with my leaders as we prep. And so if we were doing creation, we'd put the word creation. I was going to do it, but there's no paper left, sorry. Put the word creation in and then play word association with the leaders. And so we'd list off all the words that came to mind when I said the word creation. So we had design, build, new, imagination, man, perfect, form, established, foundation. And then you think, well, actually, I can think of lots of games with those now. So I can think of, um, you know, building that one, building a tower out of spaghetti and marshmallows, or the newspaper and sellotape one, or Play-Doh modelling, or Pictionary, all about creating. Whereas sometimes we get, oh, creation, I can't think of a creation game. Whereas actually, if I think of the theme and sort of the words to do with it, so we did it again, to love. So we have adore, worship, heart, joy, warm, friendship, share, devotion, die for. So we've got a game called Protect the President, which is a game where someone stands in the middle of the room, they have a bodyguard, and then all around them, loads of people are throwing balls at them. And the bodyguard has got to protect the president. And then you get to talk about, actually, what does it mean that someone's took a bullet for you? And so we have lots of games like that. And so sometimes you just need to fire your brain to think from a slightly different angle. So we, when we're doing our prep session, we play word association. And say, well, we're talking about the Good Samaritan today. What other words come to mind when we're looking at the Good Samaritan or when we're looking at the Ten Commandments? So do... Uh, Take a card. I'd love you to drop me an email, and I'd love to be able to give you uh, a box. But do I can send you the PDF of these. I'm afraid you'll have to laminate them yourself. But I can send you a PDF of all the pictures. You can come and have a look at the different themed ones, because I mentioned about the parts of the body. We've got a parts of the body one. So with your sort of kids that are maybe more along the way on their faith, is to sit there and have a prayer time and say, what, what is God really gifting in you? And there's pictures in here of shoulders. So are you carrying someone? There's a picture here of heart. Of you sort of like you're the heartbeat you like leading. Is there eyes? You have this spiritual eyes. And there's just sometimes I found every sort of kid or young person, they respond to these pictures because they're we're a visual world. We're visual people. Like 90% of us process visually. And so we literally fill the room and then have conversations about them. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. We've gone into primary schools with them and not really done something directly faith-related, but we've talked about who they are, conversations about self-esteem, self-image, and it's just great. Yeah, so you can come and have a flick through the uh, sort of themes, and I can send you a PDF, but all I've done is I've sat on Google, and the simple tip is, you know where it says the, the little something, type the two numbers, something times something, is make sure they're four digits long. Otherwise, when you print them off, they're slightly pixelated. That's the thing I found out. Thank you very much.